Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I apologize again for the scratchiness of my, uh, my throat, but uh, I know that you are all patient and tolerant people, which is why I know that probably most of you will also uh, remember slightly uh, that uh, this coming week is the, uh, the seventh uh, Gregorian anniversary of the uh, massacre at the Pulse nightclub. Um, now, personally, I remember that more as being Shavuot, um, because it was during Shavuot that uh, someone came in and uh, informed me of the news, and that is uh, an indelible mark in my memory, especially as we later found out that it was uh, 49 victims, with Shavuot coming, of course, after the 49 days between it and Pesach. Some of you may be, uh, I know at least one person in the room who is intimately familiar with it, uh, may also be aware that uh, it was after the Pulse nightclub that Temple Israel engaged in a number of increased security uh, measures. That uh, it was then that we began to have armed guards. It was uh, then that we began to uh, uh, harden our facility to uh, have additional grants uh, to uh, make sure that Temple Israel would be as safe as it physically could be. You may have wondered at the time, or maybe not, but if not, I'm going to make you wonder now. Why would Temple Israel set about making itself a more secure facility after an attack at a nightclub? I mean, we're not a nightclub, uh, certainly. Uh, we, we may occasionally have a, a little sip of, uh, of wine. Uh, we do certainly dance from time to time. Um, but I don't think anyone would make the mistake of thinking that we were a nightclub. So why in the world would we see this um, horrific act at, uh, at the Pulse nightclub as being a very uh, strong indication that we needed to take uh, firmer steps in our own security? Any uh, hypotheses? I need to make them. I'm sorry, the perpetrator was seemingly uh, a potential enemy to us. The perpetrator was potentially an enemy to us. Um, did he have numerous statements about, um, about Jews that you know of? No, but uh, he, he fit into a pattern. He fit into a, uh, a pattern, potentially. Uh, were there other suggestions as well? I thought I heard uh, another voice going parallel. Was it because they were targeting minority groups and not necessarily nightclubs? Ah, one suggestion might also be that they were targeting minority groups, and uh, it wasn't a nightclub that was the target, it was the particular nightclub, uh, known as being a, uh, a place that was uh, uh, frequented by, by those that were gay, uh, as being part of uh, the modus, uh, or part of the motivation for the attacker. Uh, also a place that was frequented by Hispanics, um, which may also have played into the motivation. But while we do very gladly have both Hispanics uh, as well as members of the LGBTQ community within Temple Israel, I don't think we're exactly known for those things. Um, it's not as though uh, that would be a, uh, a particular target for those that uh, would, would hate those groups, would think Temple Israel is, is on my list. But it's the same group of people who target those same mind uh, Jewish people in groups of theirs, LGBT groups? Uh, there is a great deal of overlap. Um, that those who often will attack, um, whether it be the LGBTQ community, whether they attack a Hispanic community, whether they attack an African American community, uh, whether they attack Asian communities, uh, whether they attack any um, other community, oftentimes we're on the list. Somewhere on the list. It may not be at the top of their list, um, but most hate groups usually reserve at least one page of their manifesto, uh, if not more, for their antagonism to the Jews. However, this particular Pulse nightclub doesn't seem to have been orchestrated by an organized hate group. It seems to have been a lone, disturbed individual. And that actually is partly why we began to uh, step up our security more than the other reasons. Uh, we knew that there were hate groups out there. They're, they've been out there since before I was born and before any of us were born. And we knew that sometimes they perpetrate violence. Anybody who lived through uh, the past 100 years of American history, let alone the last 2,000 years uh, of world history, knows that that's the case. But we saw that there was a, a rising pattern of individuals 
who would take uh, matters into their own hands, that would choose to, to um, perpetrate viol violence on the object of their derision, their hate, or their derangement. And we know that synagogues would eventually attract such motivated individuals. And as such, we recognize that it was Shifkin. When I was um, very young, um, the synagogue that I went to was in a downtown area uh, before the downtown of San Diego had been revitalized. And uh, there were often, shall we say, sketchy characters uh, in the area. But it was not seen as being unsecure for the congregants coming uh, to services, uh, whether it be Friday or, uh, or Saturday. We must recognize, however, and I think Pulse was a very local wake-up call for us in here in Orlando, that um, it's not about whether there are sketchy neighborhoods, it's not about whether there are organized hate groups, it is about the potential for those who wish to do harm to someone to find the means and to find the opportunity to do so in increasing frequency. And as such, it would have been remiss of us had we not taken the steps to try and dissuade anyone from doing so with our visual, visible signs of security that will hopefully uh, discourage anyone from thinking that we might be a, uh, a good target, as well as to harden ourselves so that even a determined person would find it hard to carry out their designs. It is sad for us to have to take those steps, but it is important for us to recognize that those are not the only steps that we need to take. As was already mentioned, one of the underlying issues with all of this is that there are some that wish to perpetrate hate against others. And we can harden ourselves and we can take security measures as we have done and will continue to do so, but we need to also make sure that we are doing what we can to lower the temperature of hate, to make sure that we build bridges across communities, to make sure that no community feels alone, isolated, and vulnerable, and to make sure that we are all reassured that the voices of goodness certainly outnumber those of hate. Sometimes it is hard to hear those voices because we are each in our own bubble, hopefully safe and secure, but still afraid. And we need to reach out to those other communities, wherever they may be and whatever their composition, remind them that we care of them and remind ourselves that they care for us. This is an act that is ongoing and one that is not as easy as changing um, door compositions or, or hiring security guards. It means looking out for others around you. It means exchanging words of greeting, words of well-being. It means asking how others of different communities are doing, asking if they are safe, asking if there is anything that can be done, and then following through. We have to work collectively to make sure that we all recognize that this is a shared problem. Although we are within our own congregation, the problem does exist beyond these doors. And it is a problem that is not going to be easily dealt with only through security measures, but will ultimately be dealt with by having a proper, loving, and caring community made up of the entire tapestry of American society. Shabbat Shalom.